Mountain roads to higher elevations in the past week have finally began to open, allowing for epic views and unbelievable landscape photography opportunities. Although at higher elevations, many of the roads are blocked by snow and rock slides, we were finally able to get within walking distance to the top. Today, we are backpacking up to a location called Clear Lake that sits at an elevation just under 12,000 feet where we will set up camp for the night to photograph more breathtaking landscapes that the San Juan National Forest has to offer. Like I said in my last video, so much to see in this area. Today we're actually hiking up here from where we started. My truck's parked two miles away up to the top where there's a lake called Clear Lake. And the plan is to possibly definitely camp out overnight, possibly two nights, we'll see. Because one down here, even 11,000 feet where I'm parked, getting down to the low 30s, uh, maybe colder, I don't know when I'm sleeping, I got a heater going. So that'll kind of decide whether I stay two nights been here two nights already coming up this road we get on the main road this road all the way up to clear creek clear lake it's about four miles but about a mile and a half away um, there's an avalanche that covered the road so we can't go any further and as i'm hiking there's road snow that keeps covering the road so couldn't get past and far as i tell from online the view up there is just gorgeous I do not know if we can get any views of these do because where that lake is it's a big pretty much a big u with the mountain and cliff sides i think it's going to block all this but irregardless should should make for some gorgeous photography so let's head on up there and hopefully we can grab a photograph along the way As usual, the gorgeous mountain views behind us, and we got this beautiful waterfall, which I could actually see that from when we were hiking up. And up top there, you see it breaking through the snow, and it goes back down under the snow. And it'd be great to get down in the valley, but honestly, that's part of the river. And that water, you can walk on that, and more like it can fall through, and that's going to be it. So staying up here and well what i got framed up is i'm going to shoot a vertical because there's not too much interest on left and right it's just kind of messy um so shooting vertical get a little bit of the snow in the foreground keeping out in the sky and the other two portions of that waterfall up above uh, i'm going to go up top and get a shot of that open spot where the water coming coming down through the snow and then back under. So I need to throw my polarizer on because I want to slow that water down some and it's still pretty bright. So all right we get up here. <laughs> if he falls, I'm gonna have to get a new dog. Harvey, come here. Come on. But throw that polarizer on, help slow that water down some. More than likely I have to crank it down to 50 ISO. I am more than likely crank it up to um, F22. So let's just see right here. Um, 
Yeah, right now, no polarizer, F11, ISO 100. I'm still at two hundredths of a second. So I'm going to go ahead, finish getting framed up and everything, and come back and kind of go over what I'm shooting. <laughs> Well, I got my polarizer on just as I was doing that that sun came back out from behind those clouds and just got really bright and so at f22 ISO 50 I was able to slow it down with that sun out to about a fifteenth of a second which still looked nice but I wanted a little bit slower so when I saw these more clouds coming I just waited a few minutes and those clouds roll right in front of those sun that sun I was able to slow it down to a fifth of a second, fifth or a sixth, and it came out pretty much right what I was looking for. I think that shot's gonna come out really nice. I'm looking forward to seeing that one on the computer. But right now, I want to get some, I want to get some real nice tight shots of that because those rocks, a lot of texture of those rocks, but they're really nice and dark with that white water coming down over top of them. Lens is up there, so I'm gonna have to go grab it and come back down. I don't know why I didn't bring the whole bag. Um, but while I do that and get set up again, hope you enjoy this shot. I went ahead and went up and grabbed the uh, other lens, actually the whole bag. That way I just got everything. So I went ahead and already framed up. I already grabbed the shot since that someone's behind those clouds. The way I got it framed up, we got all these bigger rocks in the center of the frame, almost kind of left of the frame, and they go down an angle. So it pretty much starts in upper left and goes down towards the lower right. And then also a little bit of the rock face right behind it. I didn't really want to show any of the grass. It's just too messy. I just wanted the dark rock with that nice cascading water going over top of it. So I was able to shoot at, again, F22, a fourth of a second, ISO 50. So got some nice shots here. I'm done with this spot. We're going to go back up top and see if we can get a decent shot of that water going through that snow. And those clouds are looking pretty nice. Might be able to grab some shots of those mountains from up here. So we're about halfway from to the top. So we'll go ahead and get our shots here. Maybe eat a small snack real quick, pack up, and then we'll head up. But for now, hope you enjoy this shot. I'll go up and see if I can't frame something up. Right, made it back up top here. Got my 7300 on because I wanted to zoom in nice and tight to that open up top where that water comes down through that water or snow. And I went ahead and took the shots already just so I could get the shot before that sun decided to peek out behind those clouds again. So I was able, the way I framed it up, got the uh, small cutout in the snow kind of in the bottom left ish maybe more center of the frame and some of the rock that cuts across from the right to the left at the top of the frame. I was able to slow it down to an eighth of a second, about as slow as I could get it. Still came out nice, I think. Went ahead and took an eighth of a second was kind of exposed to the rock some. I also took one at a thirteenth of a second for the snow. So if I have to go in and brush in the snow, so the snow's not blowing out, trying to expose it to the rock. So, and sun's coming out. That's why I already grabbed the shot. Then also I came, I zoomed all the way out to 70 millimeter and included none of the sky, but all the way from the, that top rock above the opening in the snow, all the way down, probably about half, halfway down the big waterfall. 
and took a nice shot of that. So, got all the shots we can from here. Um, not really seeing anything of the mountains that I want right now. So, we're going to pack everything up. That trail actually goes back that way behind us, winds up. But we just cut across. It's a little more steep, but if we cut across and hit that trail, might be able to cut off a good maybe tenth of a mile. Because, uh, like I said, we're about halfway there. So I really want to get up there. So I'm pack up and everything, and I hope you enjoy the images I just grabbed. So we'll see you at the top. come very far from where we took photos but kind of cross cut a little bit off but went across on an old cassette tape so ACDC it says for those about the rock we salute you so ACDC I'll take it with me so it's one less piece of trash out here reminds me though something old I mean I used to I used to listen to set tapes too so i'm not that young but i'm not that old but down not too far from where we're camping we explored a little bit and went down over the valley and this creek or river we were just photographing that waterfall runs all the way down past the camp and towards the bottom there's supposed to be another big waterfall that we'll check out when we leave here um but in that valley there's an old car, I guess, at some point, somehow. I mean, it's an old car, probably 50s or something. Uh, I guess got washed down there somehow. I don't know if it's camping up here. Flash, no idea how some of these things get where they are. But big tree fell on it, smashed it all. I guess when there's a fire, burn it all to all gone. It's just a shell now. But I thought that was pretty cool. But cutting across this, we're almost up to the top where we cut through and I think once you get up there um it's not going to be quite the incline anymore so not too much further to go so again we'll see you at the top we made it up here holy it is windy up here once we left that spot once we left that spot where the waterfall was 
Once it got top that back on the road, it was decently flat, a little bit of incline, but lots of snow cover road. We walked a lot of through a lot of snow and had to really pull up my map and kind of followed it because I'm trying to figure out where that trail went. But the view up here, it was tiring. Sorry if it's windy, but definitely worth it. Uh, I think we're sitting, I think we're sitting around just under 12,000 feet. Uh, didn't get to me too bad. I stopped quite a bit. It was a slow hike just because of that. But look at, this is, this is something else. So we'll see how it's a little bit chilly. I brought my, uh, Thermometer, indoor outdoor thermometer. So I'm gonna set that up once I set camp up and see how cold it gets. I was thinking it's gonna be pretty chilly tonight, so I don't know if we'll stay two nights. But with this wind, I need to try to find a spot that's at least over a hill somewhere to block that wind because it's obviously coming right up through that valley right into here. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna go find ourselves a camp spot, hopefully out of the wind. And we'll be back with you guys. All right. We found the best spot we could. There's really nowhere to get out of this wind. Um, and a lot of areas still have snow on them. I mean, up to your thighs when we were trying to walk through it. So, I mean, I got the tail back behind us. This, pretty much all we can get. Really windy. I got my small jacket. I got my rain jacket on to just help break the winds. So, well, Harvey's jacked on. Here's a little t-shirt with a liner on that we can go under this. That material's really warm. And then uh, Harvey's little sleeping bag. Oh no, that's my clothes. I put his sleeping bag in the same thing. I need to grab that. Here's a sleeping bag. Almost warm enough for them. And with that and those jackets, hopefully it's enough. So it's just a jacket liner. Not a jacket liner, but a sleeping bag liner. So I got that sewn into it. And I cut the sleeping bag liner in two. So it's double layered with the liner and that poncho liner. So I think it'll be good enough for them. Like I said, it's really windy. We'll see what the temperature gets down to tonight. Got my thermometer. And so I'm going to finish packing up. It's like 4.30. Haven't eaten yet since breakfast. So finish getting all set up. And we're going to grab something to eat. Got some nice hot soup to cook up. So be back in a while. All right, we've had our lunch slash dinner we'll have a late dinner when we get back but right now there's this trail right here is about it says like 0.4 so half a mile it's supposed to go up top this ridge over here and on the other side of that ridge down below looking at the map there's like another small lake i don't know it's a lot smaller than this one i want to hit that so we can Look that direction and see what it is on the other side because mainly because that sun's going to set on the off side of this lake and all these mountain tops and cliff sides are, won't have any light on them. And the only time I'm a little bit disappointed about, I mean, it's a gorgeous area, but this lake being covered with snow um, is it's kind of hoping for the clear, clear water and all that, but. It is, I guess, still winter up here at 12,000 feet. <laughs> it's June. Um, but the sun is going to sunrise over there. So plan on setting the alarm, get up early, and hopefully that sun lights this 
all these cliff sides and mountain peaks around this lake up real nice. So while we're eating, there's a sound like a pack of coyotes that were probably over that mountain. Who knows where they were, but they're coming from that direction. And actually, last evening, uh, there was a big pack of coyotes just going crazy. I, I love those. I just love listening to coyotes carry on. But so it's about a 500 foot ascent up there to the peak, to the ridge line. Looks like lava is going to be covered with snow, so I might be weaving around a lot. So that's why I'm leaving now. It's about 8 to eight to 6. So time we get up there, she should start looking pretty decent. So we're going to grab the bag and head out that way. to the top there's plenty more top to go but i'm not going any further <laughs> i got halfway and i didn't i was just tempted to turn around my legs were jello i, was, I am sore out we are sitting at 12,637 feet my official highest point ever outside of an airplane except for the time i went skydiving they don't count this is First time backpacking or hiking this high. But, gorge. Oh my God. Gorgeous views all around, 360 degrees. We're at tree camps. I'll have to zoom with the camera in a bit, but you can see our tent, little orange dot down there. But, I'm kind of focused on this portion right yet. Is that sun's going to set down over there when I want to get some of that before this mountain behind us blocks some of the light. So, I'm just, I usually shoot at F11 this time. I took a test shot this time. Shoot at F16, ISO 100, and it's like 125th of a second. Um, still waiting for that light some. Uh, still kind of harsh, but I can't wait too long. Or like I said, that sun's gonna go down and take a lot of this light out of the valley. So, um, look, on the way up here, the sky's got super blue, no clouds. And it's just, the clouds over there, at least it's not straight blue, it's more a haze. But off to our left, uh, on the opposite side of the valley, awesome snow, snow-covered mountains and nice clouds over there and back behind us um, i might grab a couple of shots of those before they go out of no light but i'm gonna go ahead and start taking some images of this here 24 to 70 all the way up 24. you get a view like this you go ahead and just knock out the wide view first <clears throat> well that's no good went to go ahead and focus on something a little bit closer to me it wouldn't focus and my focusing ring's going out. I don't know if it's 
got something jammed up in it. You pretty much gotta grab it and twist it real fast to get it to move. So there's no real fine tuning. So shooting at 24 wide, you have a better chance of getting in focus, but I really don't need that. I don't I don't need to get another lens. I was actually when I got up to this spot, I was like, next thing I'm gonna get is gonna be a drone. If I had a drone, oh my I'd be having so much fun right now with a drone. So much better video shots. But now I I don't know. I gotta figure out this lens. But this one here, I went ahead and shooting this low so I can get some of this um rock in the foreground instead of just shooting high and just starting with the valley. This way you get somewhat a little bit more depth. Um I went ahead since it's still so bright. And to get real good light, the sun's got to go down a bit further, but then that valley is just going to be totally shadow. So I just did uh, um, three images, stack them. Uh, that way I can get the lights, darks, and mediums and see how that comes out. It's really windy up here, so if it's picking up in this, um, sorry. But as far as that, I'm stay with that shot there. I'm going to look around here and see what else there is to shoot back there there's a mountain peak once that sun goes down that's going to look nice but and also i didn't bring my charger figured i have enough battery power on my phone i'm down to 26 so um probably won't be a whole lot of talking which you guys probably don't mind so i'm gonna look around see what else we can find 7-eleven so probably about another just under an hour before sunset so let's get to it if you watch my channel enough you definitely know i get in areas like this i have have to do a panorama you can't be in an area like this and not get, get a panorama so this out there and all these mountain peaks off the opposite direction of our tent so trying to conserve the battery on the phone so again i'll stop talking i'm going to wait a minute See what that light does and see what other shots we can get. All right, went ahead and did it. Went ahead and grabbed the panorama. So I already flipped this back horizontal. Well, I was looking at it, I know it's still bright. The sun's taking a lot longer than I thought it was going to. But you got this brown hill right here in the foreground, and you got part of it, what's well, on the other side of it, kind of extends out into the middle, which would be the middle of the frame. So I got that. Usually I wouldn't probably do something that bright on one side of the frame, but I just liked how it started there, and you got that brown hill that just leads right right to the middle of the frame and also you got these mountains in the background that was the main focus so i did three shots once i got so far over this valley is really dark so i don't know i might just use do like a short panorama just do like um two of the shots i don't know yet um it's just still bright out there can't wait until that sun gets a lot softer even on here even though i can't shoot that lake there's our lake down there. These cliff sides here. Might be able to get some detail shots. I don't know. But so right now, to conserve my power on this phone, um, I'm just gonna, we're just gonna sit here and just watch because that sun is still really bright. And once it gets soft, I think this is gonna this is gonna light up really nicely, especially all that out there. I can't wait. Last night would have been perfect up here. Last night from my truck, because all those pine trees block everything, any real good views. Harvey, get up here. Harvey, up here. Come here. This loose, this rock is so loose. And he wants to go right on the edge. <laughs> but where my truck was last night, the skies were just pink and red. It was it was gorgeous. And all those mountains on the other side were just glowing golden light with the red and orange skies but anyway we gonna stop here we're just gonna relax enjoy it and wait for that golden light
right here, I zoomed in real tight. You got these rocks just, just they're like a line in the frame. They're at an angle. And I got just these here. I think I might have got a little bit up top here. But just those all snow. Just nice minimalistic type type shot. Really like liked that. And then also I shot this here. So this here is on the right side of the frame, just runs down to the left and like that. Since it seems like I'm gonna be stuck with the 70 to 300, until I can figure out this 24 to 70, I might get pretty good at shooting 70 to 300. So good thing I like shooting details in mountains, all these rocks and just, especially with the snow, so much contrast, so much detail in the, in the rocks, this place, this place is kind of like it was back in the white sands. Am I getting ice on here? Anyway, just like white sands, how I said it was so overwhelming. This is overwhelming for me because I've never got to experience anything like this. And this is definitely worth the exhausting hike. My legs are killing me. I'm going to sleep like a baby tonight. Anyway, still wait on this light. Um, to get more golden, a lot softer. So, continue to wait. Light over here is starting to get a lot better. Over there, I did a pan panorama shot over here. Where I was talking about that brown hill going down and running to the center of the frame. But this time, I went a lot tighter because all that is dark now. And being a real tighter, nice, really nice, tall, towering clouds above that mountain range out there. And that mountain range is so, so long. Let's see if I can get it in here. Yeah, there we go. I don't know if you'll be able to see me. But yeah, since that mountain range was so long, I went ahead and took um, five, five shots. Let's get me lined back up here. But yeah, I took, took five shots. Might not use them all, but I wanted to be able to have the option of getting that whole mountain range. So it would be a real long, narrow panorama. I did the same thing here. Started here on this right. We've got this peak on the right, one in the middle, and then you got the ones way off in the distance. And I did either four or five because on the far left, it almost looks like a bull down there. And you got that peak that has like reddish rock riding up the side and that kind of kind of finish, finish the shot instead of just anything that's on the left side. So I like that. That light's getting a lot better now. So I might probably grab some more shots of that. Probably maybe do another panorama over there. I'm probably gonna call it a night because it's getting really windy, cold. When we left down there, it was 61 in the tent and 58, 59 outside in the sun. So it's gonna be chilly tonight. And since I've been just, I've just been in one spot this whole time. So I didn't do the usual montage of me running around and shooting. I'm gonna go ahead and get some more shots of that and that. And then we'll have to make our way back down this treacherous hill. So I'll see uh, right after I get these shots before I head down.
All right, that's gonna be it. That light, that light keeps getting softer and softer, but the shadows also keep overtaking more and more. Um, I went ahead, this peak off in the distance here, really like it. I've taken so many photos of that, and that light just keeps getting better and better. I got 6% left on my phone. But this last shot I took of that is probably the best one I've taken. The light is, where the light is hitting is just gorgeous. I've been taking what I can. I got a lot of photos to take or go through. This mountain range out here, the one that had those big towering clouds about above it, those I think came out really nice. Did another five shot panorama and those clouds are really popping. And the sky is now getting some orangish glow to it also. So definitely come out with some nice shots. These ones back behind us, overlooking the valley where we're camps. I think I might got a couple, we'll see. It's just that sky above it, there's no definite definitive clouds like there is out here and out here both that one. It's more of it almost looks like a gray haze almost. But uh like I mentioned earlier, I really wish that lake wasn't snow covered. That would especially from up here it would just been an awesome photograph. And need to find, figure out this 24 to 70. Hope I'm not out of lens. I got a 50 millimeter, but that'd be the wise I can go if I don't get that going. All in all, well worth a hike up here, um, all the way up from my truck up. And then even this coming up to this part was just brutal for me. Um, not used to it, over 12,000 foot elevation and had to come across a lot of snow where a lot of times you're dropped busting through it up to your thighs. So Harvey had a fun time. <laughs> so there's so much to see in these mountains in this national forest. It's just, it's overwhelming and I'm enjoying every minute of it. I have a feeling tonight's gonna be really cold. Um, probably won't stay here two nights. Don't know how long this portion is going to go. So if I get up in the morning, it won't won't be that long of a portion. So I'll probably just throw at the end of this. Thanks for watching. I can't wait to see more of this area. And can't wait to show you. So we'll see you on the next one. Yeah, my phone's having a little bit of trouble because it's not much light now. But if I would have waited five, maybe 10 minutes at most, I could have got some really nice shots. Just I was coming down the hill, I stopped about halfway because this mountainside, cliff sides around, my, around the lake, and then all four of that hill, we had all those other mountains. The sky was blue and red. it was like cotton candy. So I got some shots and after that went away, like that blue hour light, this was just real soft, like subtle light. And it was, uh, and if that lake was not co snow covered, with that baby blue color water with that really lightly lit cliff sides, it would have been so nice. I, should have stayed, but I didn't, but I think I got one or two shots. So if I did, here they are. Hope you enjoy.